good. All set? Okay, good evening. Uh, welcome to the January 5th Board of Selectmen meeting. I'm not sure why it's echoing like that. Um, tonight we're going to start off with uh, Phil Sherman and Frank Anzalon talking about the Whipple Hall project update. I don't know. Phil, you want to go first? Or are we going to do this in concert? Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, select people. Uh, I have Frank Anzalone with me, the architect. Uh, Colin from our committee is in the back. Uh, Rip is not with us tonight. Uh, Nick Trudell may be along from North Branch. And of course, Nancy is our select uh, board representative. The purpose of the presentation tonight is to provide an interim status report, present some initial pricing information, and ideally gain approval to proceed to final design and bidding, at which time we will return for your final decision as to the scope of the project. The committee has met six times with additional meetings and discussions with the architect. A scope of work was developed based on the Myers report, minus the work completed to date, minus the balcony work as instructed. North Branch has been retained as the construction manager. Documents have been developed to a level to permit initial price estimates to be developed. As indicated in the memo that was forwarded previously, the pricing is highly preliminary, intended to give us a sense of where we are, and a line called a contractor's contingency is included to cover assumed inaccuracies. By nature, these prices hopefully will prove to be conservative. I want to note that the scope as it sits today improves but does not entirely correct the acoustic problem that you can hear when these uh, cabinet heaters run. Um, we continue to investigate corrections to this and we may want to come back to you for some further direction when we have options established and uh, pricing is obtained. We're, we're not there yet. As set forth in the memo, to no surprise to anyone, estimates on the current scope significantly exceed the budget. We therefore present three alternatives. The first alternative includes the entire scope of work as it stands today and requires additional funding estimated on a preliminary basis at about $274,000 over the 600. The second alternative points out that some items in the scope might be classified as maintenance related and might be subject to additional maintenance funding, ideally as part of this project, but otherwise implemented over time. This is estimated, again, on a preliminary basis to require about 115,000 in maintenance funding, leaving 159,000 in additional funding uh, necessary. The third alternative stays within the $600,000 budget and does not require additional funding. This is accomplished by deferring most of the interior and exterior maintenance items eliminating the electrical power to the tables and the, the floor outlets that, that support them, and deferring the sprinklers in the Bucher attic. If final pricing allows, it's possible that some things such as floor refinishing could be included in the final scope. Our recommendation is to, is to adopt the first alternative, but we think it best to hold on this decision and to proceed with the final design and estimating as these prices will apply to all of the alternatives. Therefore, what's requested tonight is approval to continue with the design in order to return to the board at a later date with final pricing for your final decisions on a project scope. Happy to respond to any questions. Go ahead. Um, it's been a while since I used it. <laughs> I feel. Thank you so much. And thank you, Frank. Um, I guess my first question is, can we go ahead and order the chairs? Um, I do think that is something that we all agreed that we'd like to see happen. And I don't know, perhaps we need to take a vote on it. But um, I think that is one thing that we should the, definitely the move chairs forward. have been closed out on our side. And as of, I think, this morning, Kim has the paperwork to get that going. Oh, good. OK, great. Good. Um, I guess, you know, until you have um, an idea of a firm number of what everything costs, then perhaps we need to wait on making any future decisions. 
We, we agree. Okay. Uh, we just need to proceed with the design in order to get those final costs. Right, yeah, uh, okay. So, um, you know, I go back to the basic objective here, which is to make this building back up to snuff in terms of the things that need to be done. And at the same time, I'm uh, cognizant of the additional costs. Um, you know, blown past my um, estimates of a year ago very easily into much bigger numbers. Um, I think it's highly unlikely that we will ever want to spend an additional $275,000 on this building. So I think it's time for us to make some um, hard decisions and recommendation, uh, some direction to the committee on things to cut back on. And the first thing that I would suggest is that we um, eliminate the mechanical systems. Uh, I'm not going to vote for air conditioning whenever it finally gets put up. So I'll make that statement now. On the other hand, there are a lot of other things here that I think are well worth um, uh, getting done, ranging from the uh, finishing off the floor to putting the gutters uh, up properly to repairing the roof uh, to fixing the acoustics in here um, and so on. Um, I'm also con continuing to be concerned about uh, the table issue. Um, it seems to me that um, at the last meeting we asked you to come back with a trimmed down uh, table budget and instead the budget is exactly the same as uh, we talked about uh, several weeks ago. I'm, I'm still hung up, I'm afraid, on the um, um, Han between series nested multi-purpose table for $545 a table. I mentioned that to Amanda at the last meeting and um, I don't see any movement on that. Um, so I, I have actually prepared uh, a fourth alternative for consideration uh, by my colleagues this, this evening and, um, or by you because I think we, we need to give you some di direction other than to go price all of this, um, this out. I'm concerned that the storm windows are not dealt with in this proposal, and I am concerned about the, um, the blowers. I see Janet has her jacket on again tonight. So um, let me just share with you um, some numbers here. You guys know I'm not still trying to keep it at 300,000. I believe what I've done here in round numbers, I haven't gotten down to the pennies, obviously, I'm not an uh, expert in that, but I've, tried, I've taken the furniture back down to the level of uh, where we were with the chairs and um, uh, the $600 a table instead of several thousand dollars a table. And then I've included all of the projects that are listed on your uh, alternatives list here, except for the mechanical and what I think are the related issues to mechanical like the concrete pad and, um, and some of the demo work and so on. I think that, um, but you know, you may want to go back and look at that. I don't think we're going to debate that tonight, but to me, we've, this, this presents a more realistic view of what we can eventually agree to. Um, it totals for the purpose of the audience a little over $500,000. Um, does not include the storm windows or the blowers because we don't have any information about those yet. And I just think it's time to come to the conclusion that we're not going to be able to uh, do the entire $875,000 project. Um, it's not realistic to think in this environment that we're going to spend <clears throat> $115,000 of operating funds on, on maintenance. And uh, the, many of the maintenance title uh, topics such as um, uh, roof and gutters and paint and so on can in fact be nicely uh, uh, settled into this, this project. I also think it's important to get the fire protection done at this point. Um, that's a big item. So here you have it and um, um, I'll answer questions, but uh, basically I decided that rather than fiddle around the edges tonight that I just come forward and say, I'm not in favor of the air conditioning. Taking that out helps me uh, take care of a lot of these other things. Thanks.
We should note that, that the mechanical systems, keep me honest here, Frank, have two components to them. One is air conditioning, the other is fresh air. Uh, what's not addressed in our budget at this point is are the noisy cabinet heaters. Heat is heat. Yeah, um, I assume the fresh air thing comes back through and the question of the, the blowers and so on. So I just took the whole mechanical out and then left the, right. you know, the $90,000 at the bottom um, to deal with whatever the air circulation, we'll call it, issues are, and to, um, uh, which I think also do tie into the storm windows. So we, we cannot <clears throat> complete this project and not have dealt with the storm windows. You want to talk about you, storm yeah. windows? Yes, please. So uh, we, we did look at the storm windows. They were installed backwards. And it turns out um, the windows have horizontal bars, the top and the bottom. And they do a couple of things. They hold the glass in place. They allow you to open and close them. But they also add these structural rigidity to it. Problem is, if they installed them correctly, they would actually hit the windows. So in order to get them to work, you would have to cut that out. And if you cut that out, then the storm windows lose their rigidity. So it's really not an option. Uh, the other part is, after you spend all that money, the storm windows really don't seal and they don't really add much. They're better, but you get more from the window shades than you do as far as thermal protection. You get more from the window shades than you do from the storm windows. And we were able to test that with an infrared camera. That's useful additional information. <clears throat> it's not in your, in your report, but nevertheless, I'd like to have some, hear some more discussion about how we deal with the, the drafts over there. And I don't think we solve that problem by putting air conditioning in, so. No, uh, so. Uh, I'm not, I, I really, I'm not, I'm not, you know, sort of debating or something. I just think it's time to come to grips with the uh, scope of what we can do now with the combination of the, uh, the money and the different things that you found out and there's no sense sort of keep having on a wish list that we can spend eight hundred seventy five thousand uh, dollars more on this uh, combination of, of properties we've already spent uh, eight hundred and some odd thousand dollars under the previous uh, uh, reports and work that North Branch did and so on all of which is worthwhile okay. but it's, it's time to call the question I think on how much more we're going to spend so um, as far as the heating and the cooling, yes, we can take out the, the air conditioning units. If we do insulate the walls, we really should talk about keeping the fresh air system. Um, one, as one you can the, see, I've, I've left plenty of room to spend some money for, for fresh air. I just didn't know how to characterize that. And uh, this was, a, this was a, a rough attempt to uh, carry the conversation somewhere tonight other than, gee, let's take another look at it some other time. And I'm very open to your, your thoughts about that, but I, I guess my, my number one stake in the ground is we have $600,000, not $875,000. Number two, maintenance needs to be covered in this expense. And number three, I'm not in favor of air conditioning. If I may, we've, we've all been around an increasing number of years, and I'm thinking back to the late 1970s and early 1980s when I got into the professional business. We are working on high-rise buildings uh, all up and down the eastern seaboard, and they weren't required to be sprinkler during that design, but the, the thing that went to the owners who had to decide whether to put sprinklers into high-rise buildings was, do you want to own the last building that was built without sprinklers? And that, in fact, is what happened. Uh, entirely your right to defer or eliminate air conditioning, but you need to think about our charge, which was to bring this thing into the 21st century and get it ready for the next 20 or 30 years. People's expectations on acoustics have changed, softness of seats has changed, and air conditioning has changed. So I just ask that you consider that. You're absolutely right, Frank. If we knock the air conditioning out of here, there's, there's slack in this budget and we can pretty much do the rest. Uh, the air conditioning really drove the insulation in the walls. So knock that out too. We can do what you're doing right now and seal up some of the cracks. <laughs> Don't you need insulation for heat as well? If 
so one of the options to deal with the noise from the cabinet heaters is to remove them and put in glorified baseboard heating. That apparently was not an option in the previous renovation when these were just put in a few years ago because the walls weren't insulated. So that would go with the insulation. Uh, so uh, here, I'll, I'll talk about it. Uh, the, uh, the heating uh, radiators that are in now, they're actually good units. You really can't buy any better. Um, but they're required because of the demand, the heat load demand on, on this room. Yeah, there's, there's some insulation in the attic and there's nothing in the walls. That's why they selected them. It, it is excessive for a space like this, but that's what you need to do to keep them on. We can add the, uh, uh, the acoustical panels to the ceiling, but they still won't stop the noise from the units. It'll, it'll stop a lot of this uh, reverberation that we're getting. So adding the insulation will allow us to get rid of them and put baseboard, but that's, that's not in this budget, is it? Well, I've included, for just for the audience's purposes, I've included the insulation. I've included all of those, those things. The only major thing I've taken out is the air conditioning okay. as of the mechanical systems, as I understood what was here that might include, include them, some electrical stuff and, and so on. I'm simply trying to get us to a point where we can give you, as you requested in your uh, cover memo, clear direction on what to, go, what to do next. And to, to me, it's proceed to do everything except the air conditioning and to deal with the, s the storm windows. There, there is some conservatism to the numbers that North Branch provided. That's what you do early in the design and then it gets tailored down. Uh, Nick Trudell from North Branch thinks that, for instance, this, the fire protection budget, which is 50% higher than what Myers had estimated and it's really been since 2019, uh, that's probably padded quite a bit. So there, there is that kind of slack in here. The other thing I would point out, I think, is the air conditioning and the fresh air are modular. They, they could come in at a later time if somebody changes their mind and comes up with more money later. Uh, so it's not you know, the end of the world, but it does not leave us walking out the door with a complete project. Right. Well, you know, the t times are such that complete projects have to be modified. You know, I thought a year ago this was a $300,000 project. I'm willing to eat my words on that and agree it's a $600,000 project given all the costs and things that have been uncovered and so on. But, uh, you know, I don't think, um, think $875,000 is going to uh, fly. It's certainly not going to fly with, with me, so I've tried to come back and be positive about a project that we can we can work on and get done that uh, covers 90% of I think what needs to be done here to make the building look you know everything from the floors to the ceiling if you will and into the walls and um, if we can have some sort of consensus around that then you can go back and refine uh, certainly I'm, I'm not the engineer I'm not the architect here I'm just uh, somebody pushing some numbers trying to uh, reach a middle ground so that we can move ahead. I appreciate what you've done, Phil, in trying to force us to think about the whole project all at once. Uh, you and I have been in agreement on that for some while. It's just I don't agree with $875,000, and I don't think, given the number of times this room is used um, and when it's needed, that the air conditioning to me is a luxury, period. I, I think what would help, uh, if that's if that's the decision of the board, um, would be to know what the next couple of things to pick off would be, because that's probably not enough money to do everything else within the 600,000. There's not enough money in there for the mechanicals uh, with the extra, the electric. Well, I left, I left $90,000 in my, my numbers here, so well, I'm, I'm interested in what my colleagues think. Maybe they're gonna say, Sorry, Bill. You know, we're going for 875, and um, you can cast your vote the other way. Well, I just want to say that I, Phil, has done an incredible job with this, and I think I would caution that there isn't a building or project that today is not costing uh, much more than was anticipated one or two years ago. 
largely because of su supply demand issues and having to do with COVID and all of that. So just want to put that out, that any project we go forward with is going to be very difficult to guesstimate two years out what the true costs are going to be. And you're going to get that kind of increase, number one. Number two, I'm willing to, you know, forego things like air conditioning, recognizing that down the road that could be something that's added in. I think there are some things we absolutely need to get done. Um, and I would still like to hear from Frank relative to the issue that you continue to bring up, Bill, with regards to the tables um, and the cost of the tables before we end the discussion. But, um, you know, it's still trying to squeeze this out with um, 2022 and 2023 fees, which is getting higher and higher. So. We, we can certainly restring this if, if that's the decision, uh, when it becomes a decision. I would like some guidance in terms of my thought that the Bucher attic sprinklers were already deferring the first floor. So deferring the attic sprinklers makes some kind of sense, and that's probably $30,000 in here. Um, and likewise, the electric power to the table is a bit of a luxury. You can do it with portable wiring as easily as fixed, fixed outlets. Uh, just to give us that much more to pick off if we need to pick it off, and then we can look at putting- I already had the electric in. stuff on the floor out. I don't have that in here. Without that, I don't know what the electric is that you do have in here. Well, I assume that the fire protection um, Required some electric. I just, you know, I just, I was doing some round. Oh, good, great. Yeah. Then, then I, I only spent 500 of the 600. <laughs> but again, again, I think the principle here is that, that I'm driving toward is, let's do all the things we need to do to really make this building look attractive. We've got the shades. We've got the acoustic panels to make the sound as good as we, we can. So I'm not arguing about the any of that sort of thing. I've got everything here except the electric in the floor and the and the mechanical systems and left a hundred thousand dollars on the table so you you've reduced the painting budget and we looked at that carefully uh without getting into too far into the weeds it turns out that painting the exterior of the cupola was not included in the number that north branch provided uh, what was included was a nice shiny coat of paint behind all these acoustic panels so we said no patch the holes and prime it and walk away. Paint what you can see, paint the trim. There, again, before they estimate the thing, their gut feeling is taking that out and adding the cupola in may, may in fact increase that cost. Okay, well, I obviously couldn't see that amount of detail. And, and I'm not, there's nothing These are here conversations, that's, that's, that's not. Other than my, sort yep. of, as, as Nancy has suggested, my sort of un unwillingness to give up on the tables. Um, this is all just to try to have a discussion here to say, what if we had a fourth alternative rather than the three that you provided? And I don't have the Absolutely. skill set to do what you and Frank can, can do. So I'm, no, I, I think appreciate it, all that you have done. I, I'm supportive of what you've done. So if, if we can get the, the broad direction, we'll go back and see what it looks like with the prices, I, you know, make it fit. Uh, um. I don't want to go over $600,000. That's what um, the town voted on. So that would be my first point. Um, I agree with Bill. We, I don't think we need air conditioning. And it almost feels like we have it on now. So um, I, don't, I don't think we need to worry about air conditioning. Um, I think these tables, this type of table is great. We don't need anything different from this. We don't need to have wiring to the microphones. I mean, once we get batteries that actually work, um, this system will be fine. And the thing about these tables that is good for this room is that we can stack them and move them out of the way or add them if we have when we have voting. So I think we need to be able to move things around easily, and that's the one thing that these afford us. Now, maybe they don't look great, but I'm sure that we could find one that is similar, that folds up, that will look better than this. So that would be my other thought, not to spend a lot of money on tables. Hey, you're talking to somebody who's been working off of a Staples fold-up table for a desk for 30 years. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> uh, we just need the, the direction, right? 
I'm, I'm hearing views, but it, I, is that yeah, a, I, is that I think charge? that it's um, clear that um, there's a desire to not have the air conditioning at this time. Um, that we need to revisit the tables, and I do want to find, hear what the final say is on that because I know we've gone round and round even in the committee on that. Um, and the sounds like the fresh air piece is, is out as well in the insulation. Fresh air and insulation, two different things. Right. I Leave said the and. insulation in or? Well, I think those should come back, Nancy, under the sort of what, what are we doing about the blowers and the, and the air circulation. I'm going to call it air circulation now to maybe deal with blowers and fresh air and all that. There's three pieces to right. this. There were air conditioners that are going up there. They can come out. There was a blower that was going to bring fresh air in down in the basement, duct it up here somewhere. Mm -hmm. That can come out or that can stay in. And then there's heat. If we go to baseboard heat and, and pursue that option to see if it'll work, it needs the wall insulation. Right, you need the wall insulation. Right. I can suffer with the cold. I mean, I don't think these things work adequately. Um, what we've got now, so that's why I was saying, you know, but if, if the only way we can have adequate heat in this building is to change um, these units, then perhaps I'd be in favor of it, but I'm not sure that that's what we're going to do and I'm really not in favor of um, I'm not understanding the type of insulation that we could add to this building without um, minimizing the look of it or impacting you won't the see the insulation but it won't affect how what you have to do with the windows and the insulation gets added to the attic on okay. top of what's already there you just get more of it mm -hmm. Holes get drilled behind these acoustic panels, and the, there's a cavity wall there inside the brick, and yeah. it gets filled with insulation. Well, I guess I'd like to know then how much what that do you, what that piece is. Do we know how much that part of it is going to cost? It was hard yeah. reading this um, whole report. You have the insulation in here at twelve nine ten. Also, uh, yeah, it's not that much. Right. Yeah. right. Part of that is, is sealing air leakage into the attic and so forth. So. Right. But if you put more panels on the ceiling, then you're going to get less leakage into the attic, right? The panels basically go where there are not penetrations now, so... Whatever. The, the air sealing into the attic is not a major exercise. You can, you can count the number of things that poke a hole in the ceiling. So. So it, it sounds to me like um, we're in conceptual agreement to ask you to continue to do your good work, but to come back with the $600,000 plan that takes air conditioning out. My, my point, Bill, is simply that taking the air conditioning and the blower out probably is not enough to balance to the 600. We don't know because it, tr it tracks through to general conditions and some of that. But you know, if the if the ninety thousand that's allowed is doubled when you add in the general conditions, the electrical support, the pad for the condenser, and all those other pieces, it's still only one hundred fifty thousand, one hundred eighty thousand. Sorry. So I, we we'll look at it. But yeah, I'm but just look, saying. Look at the chairs. Nice to have the look next at the chairs and stuff. look at some of the other items that you've. You, you've mentioned um, uh, a couple of the other items, and you see, and obviously, that you know, there's an awful lot of what I could still consider to be padding in here. I mean, the the uh, general conditions, contingencies, and fees add up to 50% of the uh, con contractor's costs, so 50% uh, of, of more. So there's a, there's a lot there, and uh, you know, um, if we give you a firm $600,000 um, target and say, as you've heard here, that that the air thing needs to be thought, rethought, or thought about some more. But I would think that would be the kind of guidance you were looking for tonight. Yep. Is the problem noise, or is the problem not warm enough, or is the problem both? I think it's noise. I think it's quite comfortable in here, quite frankly. I can wear a coat, that's okay. Um, and right now it doesn't seem too noisy. It's interesting that this is the quietest I've heard these units. 
and I don't know why, maybe because there are more people here, would that do something about the sound? Um, I just know when we have planning board meetings, it does tend to get very um, noisy in here and cold, but we can deal with the cold. I mean, maybe there's something that can be done with the unit to be um, looked at, to be... They, they are what they are. Well, I also think it depends on when they've been turned on and how long the heat's been, been um, able to circulate in this. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into that. So we don't have a facilities manager of any sort who's running around checking on the temperature of the buildings and bringing them up to a certain temperature in order to have meetings. So, I mean, it's a very large open space to heat. Okay, that's probably enough direction for us to, to move forward. Should I think just spend a minute talking about the tables? Sure. <laughs> We're going to use so, these tables. So it'll be quick. Uh, after our last meeting, I did look at those tables. They are, yes, they're significantly less, but they're also, um, I don't want to say lower quality. The, the legs aren't the same gauge of thickness, but... Uh, we're happy to go with whatever direction you want. Do you need the, the best table? No, but those tables are good. So you just, we'll, we'll take, uh, we've been very busy, uh, but what we'll do is we'll take some time, we'll look at those tables. If we see something negative about them, we'll, we'll, bring, it, we'll bring it to your attention. But if they work, then we'll, we'll let you know. Okay. Just I want to ask the town clerk, have, have you and the moderator chimed in to your satisfaction on the tables now? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, yes. This was the manufacturer that the original uh, consultant recommended. You know, it's right here. Uh, I haven't heard yet why. It's, it's, it's a reputable manufacturer and so on. So there maybe there's some others, but Less than $550 is a lot different than the numbers that you continue to run. Okay. Uh, so we'll take a better look at those for you. Uh, as far as the storm windows, there's really no repairing them. They just have to be replaced. And they're custom. I think you'll be surprised at the cost of those. I think you'd, I, I, I personally, we can get a cost on it, but I personally would not spend the money on that. And save that money to replace the windows in the future. Yep, just tell us that then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, Phil. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Frank. Okay, Chair of the Conservation Commission. Yes, I have one. Do you have one? I have one. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. The, con the Filbert bog. At the December meeting, we discussed the phase two project at Filbert Crescenti Bog. And uh, at that time, we were proposing that we withdraw $48,000 from Bill. the Mary Haddad Fund to complete phase two. Um, I mentioned at that time that we had some pending funding requests that um, we hadn't heard back from the folks or received the check and we're reluctant to count money that we don't have in our hand. Um, so I do have some good news. Um, we have received more money. Very quickly, just uh, especially for those who may not have been following this project, we were here just about a year ago and requested $50,000 to build the first section of aluminum walkway in Philbert Crescenti Bog. And uh, that was approved. We um, worked with a manufacturer in Vermont who actually did a great job. He, uh, produced a quality product at the price he said he would, when he said he would, and uh, no problems whatsoever. So we are proposing to continue out to <clears throat> Spruce Loop. Um, 
the next section of aluminum walkway, and that's 422 feet. It's a long run. And the reason we're using the aluminum is because it's basically a three foot wide boat dock. It's anti-slip, it's perforated, it has adjustable legs, and it works perfectly in those areas that um, are really rough terrain. We have mud, we have potholes, we have stumps, rocks. Very hard to put two boards side by side um, and expect them to stay there, even with a lot of shimming. And what's most concerning over the last year plus with the increase in hikers, which we estimate could be as much as four or five times, the bog is always busy. We've had reports of people falling, and that's really bad news. So we are concentrating on the most difficult, roughest terrain and installing a suitable, safe walkway with a railing on one side. Um, this next section, we believe, will get us out to an area where it's basically tundra, bog, um, kind of a floating bog. And we can go back to a modified um, wooden walkway by making it wider, uh, better cross supports that are going to hit more area, hold it better, and then build um, upright posts and put the same type of rope railing that we have on the aluminum walkway. And that we can do fairly easily. It's very labor intensive, but the cost of that material is minimal compared to the aluminum, which is a perfect solution, but it's, it's really expensive, as you know. Um, so where we are is, we also said last year that before we came back to the well, we would give private funding our best shot. I've never done it before, don't know anything about it, how it works. We had some advice, um, and we, we've had people really work hard on this. And I'm happy to say with what came in this week, we have raised over $48,000, um, which is only 59% of what we need, but I still think it's pretty good. <laughs> and uh, so what we need is um, the 42%, 40, uh, which is $35,000 rather than the 48 that we talked about at the previous meeting. That will get us out um, to the tundra and allow us to continue with the wooden walkway to basically complete that whole right-hand loop. And then we'll take a deep breath and look at the other side, which I think is going to be less complex and less expensive to do. Um, so that is our request to um, have your approval to make a request to the Mary Added Fund uh, for up to $35,000. We are not giving up on fundraising. This is going to continue. Um, so hopefully money will be coming in, which we can use on the other side. I don't know whether you have any specific questions. Well, and I know you've applied for a number of grants and have had some success with that, or at least one. Yes, we did. We found some that were complicated. Mm -hmm. um, and we had one that told us they thought we had a great project, but it wasn't going to work for this year. But they advised us to come back this next year, 23, and they would actually work with us and help us prepare uh, a grant application, which I thought was great. Good. But um, we, had, um, we had good support. Uh, the banks supported us, uh, Eversource, um, the anonymous fund um, was big, and then we have this one that I believe is sitting in the mailbox in the office. <laughs> And um, that'll be good. That was an $8,000 donation. So people are supportive of this. And on uh, Awareness Day, you know, we had families there, a lot of people out of town, too. And, um, you know, you see little kids with a couple of bucks putting it in the pot. And, you know, that's really neat. So uh, people are trying to do what they can. And 
there, there are generous people out there, and so we're going to keep on working on this. But we need to get our order in and our material ordered within a couple of weeks if we're going to have the same plan as last year, which will be to have the material installed and complete by the second, third week of June. Um, supply line is better. Pricing is unknown. In the past two years, aluminum prices went up six times. Yeah. And um, that's another reason for getting our order in early. We did it in four equal payments. We wanted to purchase and own the material uh, at the place of construction. So there could be no, uh, well, gee, this didn't come in or that didn't come in or, you know, it's going to be another month. Um, and that worked out very well. Great. Thanks, Bob. Any questions? I've had a chance now, Bob, to catch myself up on the Had Dad Fund, and I'm totally in favor of what you're trying to do, so. Um, Bob, you want to withdraw this money from the Had Ed? Correct. Uh, is, that, is that correct? Have you gotten uh, approval from the Recreation Commission? Yes. Okay. So, and I'm assuming the Conservation Commission yes. has voted in favor of this. So you're only waiting for the selectmen. So we need two out of three, but we'd like to have three out of three. Exactly. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, I'm in favor of it. All right, then um, I'll make a motion to accept the request from the Conservation Commission um, for the $35,000 um, to go towards the uh, Philbrook Crescenti Bog Project. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Bob, and thank Great. you to thank the Commission you. for your work. Okay, any public comments? Bob Bowers. Thank you, gentlemen. Get out my specs. Thank you, um, and good evening. And I have an inquiry. Uh, in February of 2018, the selectmen obtained an appraisal of the seven acre Bewley property now under consideration for purchase by the town, which is tax map so lot 5910. That appraisal noted 3.3 acres of wetlands, 1.25 acres for an easement to PSC, and an additional poorly drained soil, which left, quote, an effective lot size of 2.0 acres, close quote and then appraise the entire parcel at $70,000. Town records show that the town itself currently has an ad valorem value for this property of $172,100 with a current use value of 316. In non-public session on December 19, 2022, the selectmen stated that an asking price for this same parcel is $375,000 and that the selectmen believe that is a fair and reasonable price. In prior land purchases by the town, most specifically those put forth by the Conservation Commission, the selectmen have obtained an appraisal of the property proposed to be purchased. In fact, recently the selectmen refused to move forward on a purchase of 8.5 acres of land with an effective lot size of 4.0 acres, according to the DPW, to expand the DPW site because of the asking because the asking price was $130,000 and the town assessment was $107,000. That is tax map lot 8426. In the interest of full disclosure to the public, consistency and transparency in matter in this matter, will the selectmen be obtaining a new appraisal of this wetland lot from the same appraiser who prepared the original appraisal? And I think it's important that it be the same appraisal appraiser that does it. So thank you very much. Thank you. And Bob, that does roll into the old business item that's up next. Is there any other public comment? Is this the yeah. Yes. Other than what's on the agenda? Yep. Yeah. I'm uh, John Lewis. I'm uh, 
been a town resident for 27 years, and um, I didn't. I didn't when I when I first got here. I was I was a lot younger, and I didn't want to get involved into town affairs. Uh, and I think since then, then that the town has made some mistakes, and and. Uh, some big, some small, but there, one big one was really the how the middle school transfer was handled. And I think we can all admit that there were some things about that that should have been better done. Better done. Um, I, I was a member of the Building Facilities Committee recently, uh, just a few years ago, and uh, um, um, I started getting involved in town decision making roughly around the year 2012. So about 10 years ago. Um, and uh, my comments tonight concerned the new police station. Um, and uh, I became involved in this controversy uh, roughly near its commencement around the year 2018. I was concerned then with a proposal, with I thought what would be the proposal would be to expand it over the green, this green, in larger and whole, and well, I was I was uh, taken aback by that. I was a little shocked. However, I was ended up being I was mistaken about that, and that was really not what the proposal was then. Nevertheless, I got involved. Um, so, but uh, since then, I, I I've been involved really sort of on and off, uh, and I, I left the building uh, facil building and facilities community. Uh, um, like two or three odd years ago. Um, just recently though, I've, I've been apprised of uh, the, the decision to, to look very seriously, if not there's a go ahead for uh, building a police station opposite the uh, post office on the other side of the road and it's very seriously being considered. Uh, and I think there are two key points to me regarding to this locale that um, that um, make it um, m m m uh, there. There are two negatives about this proposal. Um, the the first is that uh, with all the discussions that have happened in the past about Whipple Hall and everything else, is that me and Bob think, Mr. Bob Bowers, think that Whipple Hall, if expanded, and in my mind. I'm talking about when I say Whipple Hall, I mean the Whipple Buker complex. Um, if if you give the entirety of Buker to the police and the old court um, area to the police, but if you give the whole building to the police, this auditorium in addition, that's a lot of, that's consider everything, right? That's a lot of um, um, square footage. And then there's a possibility of buying the, uh, the, 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 the house next door, which I think should have been done anyway, a long time ago. Still can be done. Um, so me, me and Bob really think that the, we differ a little bit. Bob likes to f focus mainly on the Buker. I like to focus, I say, we can give the police the whole blame thing, everything. Um, Bob really really likes to concentrate on Buger and possible expansions to Buger. Okay, I'm a little more generous, but that's how we differ. Um, I, I say that it can suffice, and there's advantage, advantages to the Whipple Hall location, uh, which are its in relative invisibility. You go into town, you don't see a police station anywhere. In fact, if you go through Old Town, if, 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 if there's a, somebody unfamiliar with the town goes through town and, and, and tries to find a police station, you, you may not find it. <laughs> and th that's a good thing though, because th this town is like com composed of uh, colonial buildings, 80, 100, 120 years old, right? That's relatively nice, it's peaceful, it's, it's quaint, it's old fashioned. It's not the beautiful, most beautiful town in America, no, but it's nice. And we wanna, I would submit to you three that we wanna keep that atmosphere, that that's a good thing. 
that's a good thing to, it, 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 it's a positive to have around. And putting the police station, um, this leads to my second point, in the proposed locale opposite the police, opposite the post office, putting the police station in that uh, land opposite the post office, all right, building a new one there, with brick and glass, black glass, par big parking lot, police cars all around and stuff. That is going to contrast a lot with uh, the, uh, the town as it is and as it has been over the last 100 years. Uh, and I, I, I would think that, that there are better places to put the police station if we're, if we're going to do something with it, like in Whipple Hall or another site. The police are come. Police are. Um, there. Uh, I've been. I was sort of surprised by this proposal. Um, the, the post office opposite the post office building. Uh, that proposal, like, if 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 they want to build a, a great new structure, hey, you know, why don't and 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 it's obviously going to be feeding eighty nine. That they're obviously going to be using the state is going to be using that. To, Surveil 80, sur survey 89, sur for surveillance in 89, obviously. So, well, one idea is to put it right on the junction of Newport Road and 89, somewhere down there, rather than in town. So, so go ahead. Do, you have, do you have more, John? No, that's about it. Thank you for your comments. I mean, we did have the police site uh, subcommittee that worked uh, for quite a period of time uh, looking at various well, well, potential have sites. It? Have you approved it yet? Have you given the go-ahead? No, we've had, we've had proposals from that. You haven't uh, given the final go-ahead? Well, well, therefore, if you haven't, you have time to reconsider. Well, we have this discussion coming up next relative to this uh, concept plan for this particular well, piece today, of property. Right now? I'm sorry, John? When, when is the discussion you're talking about coming up? Right now, right now. When you're done with your public with public comment. That's why I asked if I could hold off. That's why I made the comment 20 minutes ago. If I could hold off my my, my comment till till later. Okay, it just wasn't clear on what your topic was until you started getting into it. Well, all right. I, I, but anyway, thank I, you. I, I said what I wanted to say. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Okay. Any other further public comment? Okay, hearing none, then we move on to old business where we do discuss the concept plan for the former Bewley property on Newport Road and subsequently plans for public engagement. Who would like to begin the discussion? Kim, do you want to? So as uh, Mr. Bowers uh, referenced, um, the selectmen, at, at, and we announced this at our last meeting, or two meetings ago, are focused now on this particular site on Newport Road, seven acres. It is the site that was recommended by the Building and Facilities Committee as a subcommittee as the number one site for a um, potential police station and the Board of Selectmen after a number of rounds of discussions with the current owner of this property and the other properties adjoining it um, have reached a tentative agreement with the um, owner to purchase just this seven acres of, of land and we have asked uh, our engineers, Jones and Beach, to do a conceptual plan, which you see behind me, um, to show how a seven, uh, 10,000 square foot uh, police building would fit on that piece of land if it was a one-story building and with the parking that is currently required by the zoning regulations of uh, for a 10,000 square foot uh, office building. It is nothing more than a conceptual plan to demonstrate the viability of locating it on that land. Um, in 2018 
in conjunction with projects cons uh, considered by the current owner. A, a considerable amount of engineering work was done on that property to de delineate the wetlands and so on, and uh, this plan suggests that uh, th this uh, construction could happen within the bounds of those wetlands, crossing them appropriately from Newport Road, avoiding the, um, uh, the larger patches of, of wetlands and so on. Obviously, a tremendous amount of additional work has to be done. There is, the intent of the Board of Selectmen at this point is to go forward to the town meeting in March to ask to purchase the land. We are not at this point doing anything to ask for permission to build a building. All we're trying to do is to tie the land down so that the effort can then be ta taken to have a full-blown discussion of what a police station on that site might look like, uh, how it might be properly designed, how the neighborhood could be properly uh, uh, protected from any such uh, construction, and so on. So the, the objective at this point is simply to buy this piece of land and the work of the Building and Facilities site, uh, Police Site Committee demonstrated beyond uh, any reasonable approach that there is really only this piece of land and one other piece of land in town that could, could be used for a future police site. So it's very important to uh, purchase this site at this point so that we have the capability of having a discussion in the future about whether or not we want to have a site there. In addition, uh, with working with the Energy Committee, we have learned that it may be possible to help meet the town's goal of achieving net zero electric use by 2030 by combining a police station and uh, solar uh, arrays on this site to help uh, provide uh, power for the, for the future that is uh, uh, renewable power. So we have actually two uh, uses for the site, which we will be describing in greater detail in, later in the month when we bring forward a more complete plan. But the goal tonight is simply to let you all know that this is the site that we're looking at, to reiterate what we said two meetings ago, that we have an agreement, a handshake with the owner to purchase it for $375,000 in response to Mr. Bauer's uh, comment earlier. We are in the process of obtaining an appraiser from the same appraiser as did the work in uh, 2018. Uh, it was a different time for land at that time. It was a different proposed use for the land at that time and a lot of other considerations, but we will in fact obviously have a verified appraisal. Uh, Ought, uh, the town may be interested to know that in general um, our town assessments are now running at about 62 percent of uh, market value. So uh, every, every property that you look at on terms of, um, uh, of uh, on the property cards at this point shows a, ma shows a major deviation from the assessed value and the recent sales in, of comparable properties. So there's a lot of work to be done, a lot of information to be provided. And the purpose tonight is to simply tell you that that's what we're doing. And then second of all, as uh, Nancy started to allude to, uh, to propose a schedule of things that we will do to engage the community in further discussions about this. And I've provided my colleagues with a um, schedule of possible activities. Um, um, I don't know, is that up there now? Can you put that up there, uh, Kim? So Nancy and, and Janet, it seems to me that what we want to do is at our meeting on January 26th, be prepared to have a more complete uh, presentation of what we might, uh, of the purchase plan for this land and how we would go forward with it um, in order to attract um, the maximum audience from the citizens of the town. I would suggest that we run an ad in the shopper the previous day, which we'd have to have to the shopper a week ahead of time. Uh, so, uh, announcing that presentation on the 26th of January, that we also plan an immediate meeting with the residents of the um, adjoining properties, that being in Hilltop and Great Pines and uh, Fenwood, because they will be particularly interested in issues that might not be of interest to the broader um, constituencies in the town, that we continue the discussions at our February 4th Citizens Committee meeting, 
in, in conjunction with other warrant articles. We obviously will have to present this again at the Budget Committee on February 8th, um, and then we again have a schedule of future meetings um, in February and March prior to town meeting. But it's time now f that we finally have settled on this piece of land and um, have uh, are near the completion of the purchase and sale agreement with the current owners that we uh, put forward a, a plan to bring this forward and have multiple discussions with the community. So, Bill, who are you envisioning is doing this presentation? Well, I think we need to discuss that, don't we? Do you intend to include members of the police station subcommittee? I would think that would be appropriate. This was the land that they recommended. Okay. Bob? I'm not sure if it was intentional or mere misadvertence, but I was on the police station subcommittee under the chairmanship of Chief Cobb, and the subcommittee did not recommend this piece as the primary recommendation. What the subcommittee said was, in reviewing approximately 84 parcels of land, there were two parcels that were uh, suitable for meeting the needs that Chief Cobb had brought to the committee as to what would be a preferred uh, site. There is a second site that was proposed so that the uh, proposal of the subcommittee was to take a look at these two sites and make a decision as to which may be the preferable site. Um, before the building committee was able to proceed with that process, the uh, selectmen decided that it would be better served for the town if, the sub if that committee was uh, disbanded and that the selectmen would then take over the task of looking into the uh, issues and questions that the subcommittee had raised. That subcommittee report included an Exhibit E, which had 14 points that required further examination and discussion. The primary purpose was to make sure that the two sites were both looked at in terms of cost, um, what would be a, a, a better position for a police station among, between those two. Some of the factors that were involved is that the site now mentioned Bewley is very wet, has great difficulties in site development, probably a large cost of site development, where the other site, which was referred to the selectmen at this point, uh, is a fully developed site with water and sewer and electricity there. It already has 35 parking places in place. It has an existing building of a roughly 75% of the square footage that is now being proposed, being about 7,500 square feet, so that you have to examine what is the site development cost, what is the cost of new construction of a 10,000 square foot building on a bare site versus construction at new construction cost for approximately 2,500 square feet with only renovation costs being uh, applied to the existing building. There are a lot of things that need to be looked at and good proper comparisons made before there's a recommendation on either of those two sites. What the selectmen have done and are doing is deciding in advance that they won't even look at the other site. They have decided to look at this site and this site alone, and that presents some difficulties. Be that as it may, I want it to be clear that the committee did not say this was a recommended or the primary recommended site. There were two sites. The committee wanted them compared. The committee wanted due diligence, hard work, and examination and analysis to take place and not simply to say, let's go buy a piece of land and then do something with it. Thank you. So Bob, I, I Grace, uh, cordially, I just disagree with your interpretation, but that's fine. We're allowed to do that. Um, the selectmen did not think that spending $2 million for the other property, which uh, for people who do not know what we're referring to was the so-called Broom property on Newport Road set up on the hill 
used to be Sigma Data um, between the uh, uh, the bank uh, next to the Sugar River Bank. Um, we focused on this property because it appears to us to be the property that has the best value for buying. We are only, only, only proposing at this point to buy the land because we cannot do all the other things that your committee recommended, some of which we have done, but not all of them, without controlling the land, number one. Number two, if we put this off any longer and this property is sold to some other party, we only get one shot a year, we will not have the opportunity to have a discussion about a police station in 2024, 2025, and we will not have the opportunity to talk about the possibility of creating a significant amount of uh, renewable energy on a property owned by the town. So I think um, I appreciate your view on this, but you've always had the view that you didn't want us to buy any land for any property, personally, and I think that you, you and uh, should join the rest of the town in listening to our presentation over the next two months and give us the benefit of the doubt that we've actually tried to represent the interests of the town in the process that we've been through. We've actually uh, been able to reduce the possible price of this land from $600,000 at the time the subcommittee was looking at it to $375,000 at this point. And there's many other points we'd like to make. Tonight we're simply trying to let people know there's going to be a period of engagement here. And I think that the selectmen have actually ad acted in a very uh, strong fiduciary role in the way they've approached this uh, whole, whole problem. Thank you. I, I just wanted to correct the misstatement. And to your point, if the selectmen had begun to act when they, had this, when they decided to take this over, $2 million for a piece of property with a building and a developed site sounds high, but it's a building with a developed site. You don't know what the final cost is until you do the comparisons. You don't know what the final cost is until you look at all of the issues. The problem is that you're leaping into one way of doing it without examining the facts and looking at the data and making an analysis. Whether I want think that we need a new police station or not should be irrelevant, and I'm surprised you brought it up. It ought to be, if you're looking at a piece of property for a new police station, it should be examined fully. The data should be looked at. The information should be gathered. The cost should be put forth. The total cost should be, should be determined. You don't just go out and buy a piece of land because it's cheap if it's not the right piece of land. What you do is decide what is best first and then proceed. And I'm sorry that you think I am committed to one way of doing things when I'm trying to look at all of the possible alternatives. If you're going to do a new police station, it should be done right. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, Bob. All right, well, thank you. Any further comment, Janet? No. Well, I think we do need to just have a quick discussion about how we want to go about um, putting together our, our presentation. Uh, maybe we could do that and, and talk about it at our meeting next month, next, uh, next week. Would that be appropriate? Sure. John. I to ask you if, uh, if, you, <coughs> if you do proceed with this, uh, what's the consequence of us owning property if the town then decides after all these analysis are made, that we do not proceed at this time. What, what, what cost is there to us and what penalties will we pay the current landowner for this uh, commitment of the 375,000? Well, if we buy the property, John, we won't, the current landowner won't have any commitment at all. What about us? He's, he's, he's gonna hold the price until we decide whether we no, no, we, we will ask for a vote at the town meeting to approve the purchase of this land, and we will then close on the purchase of the land. Right, so if at the town meeting, uh, the taxpayers decide they want to move ahead and with a different piece of property, there's no penalty or consequence to uh, financially to the town. There, there may be a small uh, uh, option agreement that will be, option payment that will be part of the uh, uh, purchase and sale agreement that will, when, once we have it fully uh, negotiated, will be disclosed. But the one of the things that we're asking the own, current owner to do is to not 
sell the property to any other party until after town meetings. So he has taken it off the market for the period of time it's going to take us to proceed with this whole process of getting uh, approval to buy it. Right, but there would be a cost to us then for him to do that. There will be a cost for us. There will be a cost. There will be a cost for us yeah. to do that. Okay. Now, we're going we're to structure it so the purchase and sale has a deposit. And one of the one of the stipulations will be if town meeting decides not to purchase it, right. we get our deposit back. So there would be no <clears throat> impact. So if town meeting says no, that's it. Right. We're all done. And if at that if at the town meeting uh, a proposal were made for a different piece of property, that won't that can't happen at town meeting. Okay. It, it, there could be a discussion at town meeting, but you could not make that kind of decision. Because right. it won't have been on the warrant. Right, but it, that could come up. Okay. Well, people, the only people, thing that could come up is people can say, we don't want that piece of land, we want a different piece of land. Right. Um, we're going to vote this one down and send you back to the drawing board. To the drawing board. Okay. But we can't, can't make a decision on what that might be. But what, what I think we hope, John, is in the course of the next two months that we'll have a lot of public discussion about these items and that people will understand the careful steps that we're taking to first of all control the land before we spend a lot of the money that would be necessary to do the engineering work and so on. Right. And we want to look very carefully at both the police issue, which is what the subcommittee was looking at, uh, and also the uh, energy issue, which has come to our attention as we've been going through these discussions. Right, no, I understand that. And the, and the, the renewable energy issue, for building ground mounts that could be put on any land. This land isn't, doesn't necessarily mean it's ideal for that. We can put ground mounts anywhere for solar. But, but I do think some of the points made today, in fact, are important that the taxpayers be given a full understanding of the expenses, the cost, because this will affect, uh, I would assume, this will affect uh, with the cost of construction uh, the taxes that will be paid uh, uh, to, uh, I assume, pay for the uh, principal and, and uh, in the bond issue that, that would eventually be presented at a, at a future town meeting. There, there is no intent on the Board of Selectmen's part at this point to propose the construction of a police station. This is buying an option to have a site to construct a police station after full dialogue over an extended period of time. There will be no discussion of building a police station. That is one of the potential uses of the land. Okay. But there, we do not intend to get into the issues of constructing a police station. So, so this land could be used for anything if it is approved? Yes. Not necessarily a police department? Yes. Hmm. Okay. The, the, but, but right now, we are for the purposes of having people say, well, you we don't want to just buy land for the sake of buying land. There are two possible uses in the future. One is a police station. The second one is for renewable energy. I, I understand that. The, either or both of them might uh, not work, be appropriate upon uh, examination once we uh, own the land. I understand, but part of that decision for the town to approve the land should, there obviously is an, an intent of either solar array or a police department based on what you just said, and we ought to have the full facts about what that future cost would be, be as we're paying for it. Stay tuned for the 26th and thereafter. Okay. Okay, J John, why don't you hold? Why don't you hold off on that, and as we go forward with this and these meetings, and bring that forward. Any other comment? Okay, under new business. I, I oh, you have a comment? Sorry, I didn't realize that. I'm slow to get up. Uh, Bill Partridge, I'm a hilltopper, and that I'm not opposed or against or or for anything. I just have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. when, um, when we vote to buy the property, are we gonna know if 
There's not going to be any more engineering done between now and when we do that. This is it. We've got a conceptual plan, right? You're not spending more money between now and when we vote. We, we, may, we may decide to spend a small amount of additional money to take this first this first pass at what what it might look like to uh, reposition it on a, a different part of the property or, or whatever. You know, this is where we will be looking for feedback from people like you who are the neighbors to say, gee, that doesn't look too bad to us, but if it was you know, turn 90 degrees or mm -hmm. something, you know, okay. that would be interesting. That doesn't cost very much in this day of electronic uh, uh, machines to uh, make pictures like this and so on. But no, we will not spend lots of money doing deep additional wetland studies beyond those that were done in so, 2018, et cetera. So we won't know if, the, if we can even get a wetlands permit by the time we vote the opinion of the engineers the who have been working on this land for over four years is that will not be a problem. It won't be a problem. And it That's says their current that opinion. The uh, DOT pending approval of a driveway permit, is there any issue with that being right across from the, po from the post office? Again, uh, that will be a discussion with DOT. The engineers believe that because there's already a uh, two-way turn lane um, in the middle of Newport Road at that particular site, that that would be an ideal place for it, but there are lots of other possibilities. Okay, it scares me, but maybe because I'm old. I, I just think that's, we've got two turns there already. It, it, so we only have one into the post office right now. One into Hilltop and one into the post well, office. Well, farther up towards the oh, center of town. Yes. I know, but it scares me. Well, right. er, earlier, what would, uh, Bob Bowers referred to some earlier work that had been done. There was also a plan that showed um, the, the entrance off Newport Road farther down toward Great Pine. So um, there's, th those are all, those are the, the details that will, engineers will make their money on, lawyers will make their money on and so on. But getting a, a permit does not seem uh, uh, a difficult road. Okay, you, you mentioned the, the parking met some ordinance. Do we have to have 50 parking spots? Do what? Do we have to have 50 parking places? The, the current zoning requires 40 parking spots, but that will undoubtedly, when we, if and when we ever make a proposal to build on the land, would be something that I would think we would ask the uh, uh, planning board to, uh, or, the, or the ZBA to grant a variance on. That's a town ordinance? It's a not, town ordinance. It's not a town ordinance, yeah. Because all the other... Um, four, four parking places per thousand square foot of space. Okay. All the, all the uh, police stations I looked at didn't have anywhere near that quantity of parking. The engineers are good. They always try to do their original plans based on what they, how they read the zoning ordinance, but I don't think the police chief thinks that we need, would need 40 parking places. Thank you. Any further comment, Renata? I just have a quick question. Can, can you come forward, please, and just for acoustics? Thank you. What happened to the two parcels off of County Road that came up in conversation once before? So um, one of our meetings um, last month, um, uh, we learned that the uh, current owner of all three parcels has come back, had, who had uh, agreed to sell all three to the town for approximately $600,000, came back and said he was now willing to reconsider um, his desire to sell all three to us, and that he really would like to just sell the one because he uh, had potentially another buyer for the two parcels. Um, and this is all part of the discussion about uh, having to have control of the land or else it's going to be sold to a third party. Apparently the current owner now believes he can build some houses on those property, on the properties. Is that uh, potential buyer uh, the same person or the same company? He has not disclosed to us who the buyer might okay. be. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further comments, then we'll move forward. Um, new business. Consider the request from Treasurer Steve Thoreau for appointment of Karen Bonewald as Deputy Treasurer. Is there any discussion or a motion? I move that we approve the appointment of Karen Bonewald. Second it. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Consider request of the Board of Fire Awards for appointment of William Dignan. I, I move that we appoint that we move that we approve the appointment of William Dignan to the Fire Awards. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Discuss solar panels for the fire department roof. Yes, um, uh, at our, one of our recent meetings, uh, Bob Bowers raised the question of why why we hadn't considered the solar panels on the roof of the fire department when the roof when the building had the new roof put on. Um, we've discussed that with the uh, energy commission and uh, 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 Jamie Hess is from the chairman of the energy commission is here to discuss with us what what would be entailed in putting uh, solar panels on the roof of the fireplace, the fire station. Jamie. Well, thank you. Um, thanks for giving me the opportunity to um, <coughs> bring everyone up to speed on the um, <coughs> possibility of solar on the fire station roof. Um, so do you have any specific questions or should I just give some general information? Why don't you uh, bring the board of selectmen up to date on what you've learned might be the cost of doing that and the credits that we might get and how we might fund it? Okay. Uh, I'd be happy to. So um, the fire station has uh, quite a large roof. It's, um, the building footprint is almost as large as the uh, big highway garage down on South Pleasant Street. So um, on that highway garage two years ago, um, two and a half years ago on South Pleasant Street, we put a uh, 50 kilowatt solar system consisting of over 200 panels and that is now producing approximately one-eighth of the electricity used by the town. Um, so by putting a similar number of panels on the roof of the fire station, we could um, convert another one-eighth of our municipal electric use to solar and renewable, um, which would get us uh, over halfway toward meeting our goal in the year 2030 of 100% renewable electricity. Um, so that would be a big step forward. Um, in terms of cost, the, um, we've got just at this point a back of the envelope um, cost estimate of $150,000. Now, um, in the past, we have brought in outside investors to put up the cost of our solar, but the um, economic climate has changed significantly in the last six months, so it's definitely worth considering um, owning these um, solar panels outright if we put them on the fire station. So the two things that have changed, the first thing that everybody knows about is that um, the electric supply rate has jumped more than 100% um, if you're on so-called Eversource default. Now, the town of New London benefits from a third-party supply contract, so we pay way below market rates for electricity, but that contract is up for renewal this coming November. And we don't know what's going to happen, but our costs might follow suit with everyone else's. Everyone else's cost has jumped 100%, and ours may also in November when that contract is up for renewal. So that gives us an added incentive to install as much solar as possible. The other thing that's changed is the Inflation Reduction Act contains a very important pr provision that benefits um, all nonprofits, um, including our municipality uh, and our schools, and any other nonprofit that doesn't have income and doesn't pay taxes. Um, in the past, the federal incentive for solar was in the form of a tax credit, which if you didn't pay taxes, you couldn't claim the credit. So now, thanks to this new act that passed last year, um, nonprofit entities in lieu of a tax credit can get a direct payment from the IRS of 
the value of that tax credit, um, which is 30 percent. Um, <clears throat> so you're talking about a $150,000 solar array um, only costing the town $105,000 because of that initial $150,000 investment, we get back $45,000 almost immediately. So between the increase in electric rates and this new um, direct pay rebate from the federal government, um, there's, no, there's never been a better time to install solar. So um, we might want to do some analysis, figure out if we want to bring in outside investors again, um, but all indications point to the likelihood that we will want to um, finance the solar ourselves and begin reaping the benefits immediately. John, I, thank you, Jamie. I think it would be interesting to look at the language with regards to um, what constitutes a nonprofit. Generally, governmental entities do not qualify. Um, so whatever language is in that, it just might be good for us to have our attorneys look at that. Well, it, um, it certainly wouldn't hurt to do our due diligence. Right. Um, but it's um, within um, those in the know on energy, and um, I got a lot of information from a webinar that was hosted by Vermont Law School um, a couple months ago. Um, they said that this provision in the Inflation Reduction Act was aimed um, specifically at um, schools and municipalities, although other nonprofits could benefit as well. Okay. So there, there what certainly was not any intent to exclude mun municipalities um, from these benefits. Good. So that I would think, be great. That'd I think we're wonderful. on safe ground there. Um, now, in terms of financing solar, if we choose to do it ourselves, um, we do have uh, the Energy Conservation Capital Reserve Fund, um, which might actually have enough money to fund the entire project. I think you would know better than I do how much money is in the fund, but it's, it's certainly worth considering. Now, um, I don't see Chief Lyon here, but I'm sure he would want to have some input on um, how we go about this. Um, he's expressed support for solar in the past um, on the fire station roof in particular, and the only reason we didn't proceed sooner was because um, the building need to, needed to be re-roofed, which has um, just recently been done. Um, but Chief Lyon would have, want to have some input on whether there are certain areas of the roof that should be off limits, um, like um, directly over an equipment bay, because you don't want um, a heavy snowfall sliding off the solar panels and blocking an equipment bay right at the time you get an emergency call. Um, and we, the Energy Committee, would be happy to work with the Chief to identify those locations and make sure that the solar design um, conforms to his needs. And certainly it would be good to know if that the roof can bear the load. Right, the that's, that's another Maybe analysis. Structural analysis. Right. And um, yeah, so you won't find a install, uh, solar installer who will put solar panels on a roof without making sure that that analysis has been good. performed uh, beforehand. So I, I know this, the fire station has um, two wings that were constructed at different times and we may discover that we can put solar on one wing but not on the other. Um, but at any rate, half a loaf is better than none. So we'll see how everything plays out. And um, thankfully, the solar company that we've worked with in the past is willing to do a lot of the um, design work for us at no cost. Great. Thank you, Jamie. So um, I'm assuming that uh, Chief Lyons is not an objection to this? I have not heard any objections. I haven't talked to him recently, but I think Jamie has in the past. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've talked to Chief Lyon several times in the past, 
and um, often it was his instigation. He asked me, Jamie, when are we going to do solar? So I think so then, he's, he's very excited. So I think that we could at least then uh, state that we want a potential analysis yeah. and agree to move forward with that. And the Building and Facilities Committee, as Bob pointed out, I think you were absent from the meeting, Nancy, but Bob pointed out um, it's one of their recommendations in 2018 was to pursue this, and, <clears throat> and they had met with Jay, and um, he had expressed interest too. So I think if we can let the Energy Committee work on this, this would be a good, good use of the town's uh, resources to uh, take a closer look at this. Right, and that's why it was helpful to have the Buildings and Facilities Committee. Um, and we need to know if there's money in the Energy Conservation Fund. Right, and that and maybe something you want to rethink as far as have, you know, we cut that one in half this year. You might want to rethink that. But okay. Yeah, we can get the balance. There's about $130,000 in the Energy Conservation um, currently. currently, yes. Yep. And I, I would also note, last night we did uh, spend some time with the Energy Committee, and one of the members, Peter, Vetiver was wanted everybody to remember that the money was originally put in for the thought of potentially buying the system at the end of six years. So we'll want to think about that in future deposits if we do use the money right. for the fire station. But he, you know, Peter wanted to make sure we remembered uh, to have the money available should we need it to buy the system later. Right, and and Kim, you're referring to the the two existing municipal yeah. solar arrays. Yep. Um, where we would um, get our first opportunity to purchase them at the beginning of the year 2026. Okay. So that's, that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, of course, that's a separate analysis we'll have to do as to whether it's beneficial to the town to make that purchase at that, ta at that time. But ideally, we'd have some funds put aside so that we would be able to um, make that purchase if we decide it's in our best interest. Okay. Comment, Colin? Dan, you, you can repeat the question for the audience. Uh, can you share with us the annual maintenance cost of only versus the um, For solar panels? Well, there's pretty much zero maintenance. Um, if you have panels on, mounted on the ground, um, you may need to mow the grass around them and keep brush from growing up. But if you have panels mounted on a rooftop, um, there's really zero maintenance cost. Um, and the only equipment replacement that may be necessary is there's one component called an inverter that typically um, comes with a, a warranty of between 10 and 15 years. Um, it's possible that in that time frame you might have to replace the inverter. Um, the panels themselves have a warranty of 25 years and they're um, likely to last much longer than that, perhaps even 50 or 100 years. So I think um, maintenance cost is, is really not an issue at all. Um, it's mainly if we were to buy a system that we don't currently own, what would be the purchase price based on a fair market value appraisal, and would that be uh, a good investment? Would the return on that investment be sufficient to make it in our best interest? Okay. <clears throat> I think we're very fortunate to have the Energy Commission Committee that's so in involved in these things and that we have a potential supplier in Norwich Solar who seems to be so interested in, in working with the town, so. Yep. Thank you, thank you Jamie. Jamie. Right. Well, thank you so much. Um, I think it's really exciting that we'll have a chance to work on this together and hopefully it'll bear fruit. Jamie, on a different note, I have two letters for you. I believe these are for Jamie, correct? Thank you so much. Sure. Now, can I Oh. You said he was going to take them. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, moving right along. Let's discuss uh, the, the future use of uh, Bucher committee work.
the committee met um, numerous times and discussed options for the future use of Bucher, but um, basically they realized that probably nothing will be done with Bucher for several years, so um, the goals of or ideas that they had may change significantly. Some of them were renting out the former court area, now occupied by the Recreation Department, a storage of tables and chairs when not in use in Whipple, secured storage for voting materials, a community center, a recreation department, emergency management, um, welfare offices and other space for town boards, committees and commissions, uh, a swap shop, space for clean recyclables, a child care facility, which I've heard about lately that pe people do need um, child care in this community, eventual offices for land use, planning, zoning, assessing, which allows room for expansion of the town clerk tax collector offices in the academy building, and use of the Sid Group room for small meetings. A possible additional use was identified as a private venture incubation, renting space, and uh, the committee felt that ultimately townspeople should be surveyed as to what they would like to see happen with Bucher if the police department moves out. Any comments, questions? Wait, Bill, were you going to say something? I was just going to say this is a good example of a, one of the committees that we started to appoint in, in March, and uh, it sounds to me like perhaps we could thank them and um, reconstitute them in the future if and when um, it's appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. They, they were all very... Um, enthusiastic about a relocation of the police and dispatch and felt that Bucher could be um, used for multiple uses and that would benefit the community. And I do stress that child care came up to me several times. A number of uh, individuals have said, we need that in this community. John? Could you use the microphone, please? John mentioned a number of uses for Beaker. Some, some are possible, some, some are good, some are possible, okay, and some are, are not so great. And one of the ones that are not so great, which, which I think would, is, is important to the town, and what I've been recommending to the town to uh, do for the last 10 odd years, is a community center. I, I don't. I, for all the for all the stuff that we would want to put in a community center, Buker just uh, Buker just it, it it just wouldn't wouldn't work for for a community center. It's chopped up into these little the, we have, the, the these little rooms and hallways. I mean, for a community center, you need big halls and such, and uh, it, it it's. It, there's no way it's going to work, and that, I, I don't think it's feasible. But, but, but I think it's in, important for the town. It's something the town should look at building. No. Thank you, John. Okay, town administrator report. Uh, we had a, some water damage in the town offices when the upstairs bathroom blew a... I don't know, what are they, pipes, something, I don't know. Luckily for us, our town clerk tax collector works late, heard water running, and went upstairs quickly to a waterfall of water, which made its way all the way down into the basement. Uh, we were, he was able to quickly shut the water off. We got Surf Pro in there. We contacted Jim Perkins, obviously, to check the basement, um, dried out the area. We'll replace some tiles. No real uh, extensive damage. Uh, but we'll look into filing an insurance claim depending on the cost. I, mean, I haven't seen the Serve Pro bill yet, but we wanted to make sure that we dried it all out so we didn't have some mold starting. Um, we've got $80,709.67 uh, from the state. Uh, this is a one-time payment, uh, and it must be used for bridges. So I'll be talking with Bob Harrington about, we have several bridges, large culverts. Um, unfortunately, we've done a lot of work in the last couple of years on them, but 
I'm sure we'll put that 80,000 to good use. Um, I have provided you with the list of people who have, New London citizens who have passed away. Um, and if you could look at it and we should come up with uh, the list of folks that you would like to dedicate the town report to if you are gonna go that route this year. Um, and we can bring that issue up at a future meeting. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Committee meetings and reports. <clears throat> Uh, the Budget Committee continues its meetings. Uh, the Budget Committee is going to meet next Wednesday tentatively to take a vote on the budget that they would like uh, to take forward to the town meeting. Um, we will then have an opportunity at our meeting the following day, a week from tonight, to look, look at that and also to consider a few things that have come up in the interim. Um, and then. Um, we will take the two budgets and have a reconciliation meeting tentatively on the 26th of, um, of um, January. And then the budget hearing is on the 8th of uh, February. That's all proceeding due course. And I think anybody who's interested can, um, there's been videos that taken of the um, recordings of the meetings and I won't go into more detail here tonight. The Waste Committee continues to meet every couple of weeks. Uh, uh, they will be here on the 26th to give a give a report and ask for um, some consideration of uh, funds on the on the warrant at the town meeting. Um, they reported uh, this morning that there are now 1.3 tons of compost have been collected in the last 11 weeks on the small um, test that's being done with 20 families in town, and they're very encouraged by that. Great, thanks, Bill. Okay, um, we have a slew of meeting minutes to approve. Um, I'm going to uh, bunch some of them together, but I'm going to start with October 27th separately. Is there a motion? Second. Okay, I will recuse myself. Janet and Bill. Are you? Okay. Uh, November 3rd. All those in favor, aye. November 9th. Second. All those in favor, aye. November 10th. Second. All those in favor, aye. November 15th. Uh, yeah, you and I were there, so we'll approve it. November 18th. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And November 22nd, second, aye. Okay, now we have um, December 15th. Second. I will recuse myself. Aye. Aye. And December 19th. Second, Aye. all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That was a lot of meetings. <laughs> we tried not to have many meetings and then we had like four times the number we usually do. <laughs> okay, uh, we have the litany of upcoming meetings and special events. Is there any other business to come before the board? Yes. Okay, and so we got an approval of pay vouchers and permits, et cetera. 